and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome me, welcome you. Why don't you go ahead and stay a while, click the red subscriber button so you can become part of the royal family and be one of the J-Bays. We know why we're here, right? You saw the title, you know what time it is. Ambient Lighting Palette Volume 3 from Hourglass Cosmetics. It's been a long time coming. Yes, it's taken us a while to get here. I am going to kind of delve into how we arrived here because I think that for a lot of women of deeper complexions, this is um, bittersweet in a way. And you might be wondering why. So I've got all the tea for you. Every year, Hourglass releases an edit of their uh, best-selling products, their powder products specifically. So uh, there's an ambient lighting volume one and two. Volume one uh, is, you know, a favorite. And these powders are supposed to uh, reflect light, supposed to blur the skin and give your face an overall flawless appearance. Usually you get a um, finishing powder, you get a bronzer, and you get a highlighter. And last year, 2020, for the holiday season, volume two hit the scene and people were really excited because for years we've been asking Hourglass to create powder products for women of deeper complexions. They have the Vanish Stick Foundation, they have the Vanish Liquid Foundation in a very nice shade range that includes richer skin tones and the concealer line is a big hit as well. However, if you were planning on setting, finishing, applying any sort of blush, any sort of, you know, anything except a highlighter to your face, if you were deeper than tan, forget about it. So when Hourglass introduced the Ambient Lighting Palette Volume 2 and gave us this campaign photo with this beautiful model, people were pretty excited, but True to form, <laughs> true to form, Hourglass was catfishing. They have a habit of saturating their photos, making the lighting kind of dark and giving you the impression that what you're going to receive is going to be deeper than it is. And they've received a lot of flack for that as well. Last year, after the whole ambient lighting catfish debacle, I decided that I was done with Hourglass until they made some improvements. So then fast forward to this holiday season. We have two face palettes. Um, one is designed for light to medium, the other one is for medium to tan. That's what I would say, because it's certainly not for deep. Now there are some elements to the unlocked palette this year that do look like they would work for deeper skin tones, but I'm gonna wait for singles. I'm not spending $80 on all of that, child. I could totally live with just that one really vibrant blush as a single. But, oh, this volume three though. When I saw the campaign photos for volume three, I was cautiously optimistic. And it's difficult for us to be excited about Hourglass coming out with a palette that caters to deeper skin tones for a couple of reasons. One, we know how they do with the aesthetic of their brand. They catfish. They catfish with the pictures. I mean, there's no other way to say it. What you see is not what you get. And so I said, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. And I think that was the consensus across the board for deeper skin tone consumers. Uh, some people are not giving Hourglass another chance and they refuse to purchase. And you know, your feelings are valid and others still would like to see, you know, what, what is giving, right? And that's where I come in. I took one for the team, I purchased the volume three palette and it's here. Came about five o'clock today via UPS. Here's what she looks like. She has been played with, so she has <laughs> the fingerprints about her. Um, you're getting two setting powders in this palette as well as a highlighter. They did not provide a bronzer. If you happen to be um, lighter than myself, I feel like the center shade will work as a bronzer. So here's what we have. Now I'm just gonna, you know, scoot over a little bit so you guys can see in the campaign photo what I'm talking about, okay? There you go. Now, even though 
the campaign photos do look deeper and richer than the actual palette presents in person. I still, upon looking at it, felt like it was going to work. Let's do some swatches. Finger swatches on baked powder products are not going to give you the full story. These apply very sheer. They're buildable, of course, but they do apply very sheer. Here's what we have for the swatches. It's going in reverse order, so from here to here. That's what we have. And as you can see, that center powder that's supposed to be for all over the face blends in beautifully with my skin. We have a powder here that is an, you know, it's an ambient lighting palette, but this one has some sparkle to it that catches the light. And this would be ideal for setting your concealer areas, not setting, I'm sorry, um, finishing your concealer areas or your brightened areas. And that's exactly what I did with the lighter shade. I applied it with a fluffy brush. In this case, I used the BK Beauty 104, which is sort of like a tapered uh, dome shape. And I applied the lightest shade which is called Eternal Light, across all of the areas that I highlighted. And I did set my um, like most inner corner area before applying the finishing powder because I have fine lines and I wanted to make sure that they didn't crease. Um, on top of that though, is it's all Eternal Light. And so I did a side by side. So I did one side of my face so that you could see the difference of what it's giving. I do see the um, the shimmer in there doing its job and I do see some blurring. So next up for all over the face, of course we have the center shade, which is Transcendent Light. I used my Sephora 50, I believe. Yeah, the Sephora Flawless Light Powder Brush. And that um, these are all synthetic hair brushes, by the way that I used um, and just applied that to every other spot on my face that I did not use the first powder. So forehead, jawline, cheeks, you know, pretty much um, everywhere else. I applied about three layers because I couldn't even, you know, it, it wasn't changing the color of my foundation, which is great. That's exactly what I want. I don't want a powder like this, a finishing powder to change anything in terms of color. I just want it to sort of finish things off and give me a nice um, filtered effect. Next up, we have the Prismatic Strobe Light. And this is the highlighter in the palette. So I took two of my highlighting brushes. I started off very uh, light because while this powder is very fine, it does pack a punch. <laughs> it's definitely, you know, it's it's certainly not a intense highlighter, but it's also it's also not subtle. <laughs> so I went ahead and used the Pro Featherweight Blending Brush number ninety three from Sephora, and th that was my initial application for all over the face. So I just hit all my normal areas that I highlight, and then I went back in with my Sephora Pro Highlight Brush number 98 and just targeted the upper sort of cheekbone area for a little more impact and just to see what this highlight could potentially do. How much impact can I get? So I blended that in very well and then I went back over it with a little bit more of the Transcendent Light just to blend everything together. The end result I think looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, this is beautiful. These are all three new shades. So I don't know how long they were in the lab working on this. I don't know why it took so many years to give us something like this, but it is beautiful and um, it works. Why am I not jumping up and down? Why am I not like super excited? Like you need to go out and get this is because I still have this and you guys can let me know how you feel in the comment section, of course, but I still have this kind of air of like, they did this to, what's the word I'm looking for? 
they knew they weren't getting anywhere without producing this product in terms of like the heat, right? <laughs> in terms of the, you know, comment sections being lit up, you know what I mean? Um, and I want to actually thank the allies, you know, people who this did not affect coming out and, you know, saying I'm no longer purchasing from Hourglass until they are more diverse with their products. It felt like being in a long-term relationship with somebody who you've been asking repeatedly for a commitment and they're finally just like, girl here, yeah. You know, <clears throat> it's, it's like, you don't really mean this. It doesn't feel genuine. And so while I think these products perform beautifully and I'm not planning on returning the palette, I also feel like Hourglass should publicly address the issue. I think that that would help to resolve a lot of the ill feelings about the brand with a lot of people. Um, Hourglass doesn't really speak out and address much of anything. I haven't really noticed them doing that, but I think in this case, it's warranted. I think that having the, you know, team or whoever release a statement explaining that they've heard us or, you know, whatever their reasoning is behind creating these products finally, um, because they're beautiful. <laughs> these products are lovely. And I think that it would be great if people who have been wanting this for a long time went out and purchased it and enjoyed it in their collection. But I also would not um, disagree with the people who do not want to buy it because they feel like Hourglass doesn't give a crap. I mean, don't you care about your reputation? Don't you, you know, what's, what's up with that? I just feel like that's a little bit frustrating. And I think that people who decide not to purchase this, even though it works beautifully, are justified. So as much as I can say, yes, this is a really great product. I'm not going to tell you to run and buy it. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> That's up to you if you want to do that. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate it for everybody who was curious about it. And then you make your decision from there, you guys. There is a link in the description box for the few places that it is available. And um, if you choose to use my links, please know that I do get a commission um, for the purchases that you make through my affiliate links. If you would prefer not to do that, then you just shop the way you normally shop. No problem. Anything that is um, received through commission is invested back into the channel. It helps me purchase products for review. It helps me upgrade my equipment. Um, it helps, you know, buy snacks for Nala. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, I hope you did enjoy this review. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know you enjoyed it by giving me a thumbs up so you, I know that you like this type of content. And then comment in the comment section, let me know how you feeling, you know? Do you plan to purchase this palette? Do you feel differently about Hourglass now that they have created this product? Do you have critiques about the way Hourglass addressed the issue of their lack of inclusion in their powder products? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, I mean, come on now, let's do this. I am doing a 1000 subscriber giveaway pretty soon and we are um, on the road to monetization, you guys. That's why I created a new channel because I felt like, <laughs> you know, I deserve monetization, hello. So that's why we're here. And so if you are interested in helping me reach that milestone, then um, all you gotta do is watch my videos. Watch my videos, comment, you know, engage and um, like the videos that you like, share my videos so that people can learn about my channel because I have a very common name. <laughs> so it is difficult to find me if you are not looking for me. So if you could help me out by sharing this video, especially because I want to reach as many people as possible for whom this content applies. And with that Queens, I want to say thank you once again and that I love you very much. And I will see you next time. Bye.